There's loads of videos out there on YouTube with excuses for not running. It's very negative stuff and you know they don't call me Ed Positivity Bud for nothing, right? So today I have a video covering the top excuses that runners use for buying new running shoes. I bet you've used at least one or two of these in the past. Welcome back to the channel guys, if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button, but also click the bell below for notifications of when I knock out those new videos for you. It really does help us out too if you give this video a thumbs up like and share this content with your running buddies. Danke schön. So today I have my top excuses that runners typically use for buying new running shoes. If there's any I've missed out, let me know in the comments below. Number one, they were on sale. I've known loads of people use this one as an excuse for picking up a pair of shoes that they perhaps don't need. Maybe I shouldn't say those sorts of things. People get upset with me. We get these great deals pop up and we find it very hard to not pull the trigger on a specific shoe. It might be they've only got a couple left in our size and the worry and anxiety that we might lose out on an incredible deal is too strong to stop us from buying them. It's a real shame to let that one go. Have you ever said that? You know, I've got to grab a fourth pair of the Nike Invincible Run just in case my others aren't enough to tide me through for the next three years. What on earth would happen if I didn't have a brand new pair of them stashed away somewhere and that shoe became like the best shoe in the world ever for me. We see discounts popping up from time to time, especially at the end life cycle of a shoe when there's gonna be a new version of that model coming out. For example, the Pegasus 38 and the Invincible run. There's a brand new version of those coming out in the next few weeks. So you start to see some discounts on the prior release try to show some resolve people say to yourself do i really need another pair of these shoes the answer is probably yes oh no i mean number two the last purchase i've said this one certainly this is the last shoe that i'm buying for the next month two months three months the last shoe i'm buying this year I've definitely said that. This shoe will complete my running collection. I don't need any more. Every base is covered. Like, fivefold. We all know when those words come out of our mouth, when we utter those immortal words, that it's just not true. We don't really mean it. You'll enjoy them, hopefully, for a few runs, maybe for a few weeks, and then they're not the new one anymore. The whole running shoe thing, it's a process like running, really. It just never really ends. You complete one run, and then you're kind of thinking about the next one. What am I going to do tomorrow? You know, how many miles am I going to run? Which shoe should I select? Should I use the new shoe? Oh excitement i think perhaps a better excuse here that's a little bit more fitting to how we actually feel is this is the last shoe that i'm gonna buy for a while i mean the grass is always greener on the other side isn't it we get a brand new shoe in and it's got that initial excitement and after a while we work out its sort of advantages disadvantages the pros and the cons but as upsetting as it sounds sometimes we do have all the shoes that we really need in a current rotation we don't need any more i love to eke out a few more extra exploratory miles in a shoe that i haven't used in some time perhaps on some recce routes take a shoe out that's just sadly been left in the box for a while for whatever reason sometimes you actually come out with a really good experience from that and you figure out that a shoe might work at a certain pace or speed or effort level and you just didn't realize it i just think it breaks up the whole experience a little bit remember variety is the spice of life it might give a little bit of air time to a shoe that we haven't really experienced too many miles in or it cast aside for whatever reason so can break a curse on a shoe sometimes so maybe look to your current rotation before you grab a new one Number three, I've tried the last few versions of a shoe, so I should really pick up the new one to find out what it's like. I hold my hands up and freely admit I do this. The Pegasus 39 is en route right now. I love the 35, the 36, 37 wasn't great. I do strongly believe that the custom versions are in fact a little different compared to the general retail versions. The 38 was quite a lot better. I had a really good experience in that. So surely I've got to try out the 39, right? Is it going to be all that much different though? Probably not. I love a good workhorse daily shoe. Play the sound. Go on, Ed, play the sound. All right. But I think you've got to try and rein in the expectations a little bit on some of these constant iterations. I mean, the 39 is probably going to be a bit closer to the 34 because we're going back to two airbags again. But I thought just one was really great a couple of years ago. 
so often a new version of a shoe drops and people clamor over each other to get a pair just have a little think about it you know take a breath do you really need this one i think unless previous versions of a shoe have been absolute winners for you why not just leave it on the shelf i always try to be as objective as i can in my reviews if something's trash then i'll tell you so the majority of shoes that i get i buy with my own cash yeah i'd love to say that they're all great the majority of them are workable shoes, but, but they're not always the greatest running shoes, I suppose. At least not for me, anyway. I'll get back to that a bit later, though. Number four. I got this pair for racing only. Now, I think this is fair enough for some of the more fragile of the super shoes out there. I'm talking about your Vaporfly Next Percents, maybe a Metaspeed Skies from Asics, or perhaps the RC Elite 2 from New Balance. Everything else, though, that I've tested, certainly in my experience, seems pretty resilient and durable these days. They don't really need babying all that much. The Adios Pro 2 is a real workhorse of a super shoe. Seems like a really terrible use of funds to buy a shoe for racing and then just sort of leave it in the box sort of sat there dormant like a hibernating tortoise and don't forget that adidas light strike pro material just gets better and better the more you use it you need to at least get them up to 40 50 miles and they feel nice and supple like a well-worn moccasin it's a bit like dough when you're making a loaf of bread or something or a piece of meat when you get the tenderizer out and that's how that shoe needs to feel when you're going to put it on for a race straight out of the box it's just going to feel a little bit too new and unused plus the fact do you really want to race in a shoe that's completely unused yeah it could fall apart after two miles what are you going to do then you can look a bit foolish that's what you're going to do and then have to do the walk of shame back to the start line to get back to your car i think any race shoe needs a little bit of break in a more torturous test don't have to take it out for loads of miles but just at least to make sure that it's operational and that everything's ship shape anyway buying a pair of shoes for racing great i think leaving them in the box for ages and ages just doesn't seem to be a good excuse these days think of those poor shoes stuck in their box lonely unused and unable to show their stuff number five buying a specific shoe to help you run through an injury i haven't done this one i did buy a shoe that did help me to come back after an injury but not to run through one no shoe's gonna magically enable you to run if you've got some bad injury just don't do it even if it's super soft it's forgiving it just helps with the bones and the joints well that's wonderful but if you've got an injury i really can't see that how running is going to help you to get over that i just don't see it you know, i'm no doctor or anything like that but that just seems crazy to me rest up recover and then you can run untethered to some special shoe that you've bought that helps you to run remember you are the engine and the legs that do the running the shoe is just a additional piece of candy you do it not the shoes can do it and i will do it six S six number six lastly buying a shoe because everybody else has it or some person on the internet told you to. You should always buy things that you think you need rather than someone else telling you to buy them. If someone else has got a shoe and there's this sort of peer pressure-y thing to get it because everyone else has got it, it doesn't really work with me. I'm already too fast, you know, if someone's got something that works well for them, fantastic. You see me write that in the comments quite often. Someone will say, I've got this shoe and it works really well, and I'll say, that's great, I'm really pleased and happy about that. I'm not going to take some sort of weird pleasure in seeing somebody buy a shoe and it not work for them out there. That's not going to make me happy. I want other people to be happy and to sort of spread that experience and the knowledge. I know I run a shoe review channel and I recommend things to people, but I'm just one man. Use my experiences to help you make wise decisions based perhaps on all the sources that you can find. I mean, you don't write a dissertation, do you? Just using one primary source or one secondary source. You go out and delve and find all the relevant information that you can. The classic cats, Tim Gross, Kafuzi, the Fox runner they all give very experienced experiences about their shoes what i mean by that is they put in the miles there's no axes to grind there plus the fact those guys are more mortal to me than some of the other people out there i can't really get anything from watching certain reviews or certain videos those people are in another world to me in terms of pace and speed their fitness their training regimes i can't imitate those it's impossible yeah, I'm a dad. I've got other stuff to do. I've got the yard to avoid doing. You know, I have a full-time job as well. 
it just isn't possible for me to get there right now. The guys I just mentioned tend to give you a more warts and all experience with the shoes. I'll tell you if they're good, tell you if they're not good. They're not pushing anything on you. Numbers are great, aren't they? I like numbers, looking at numbers, but they're very focused on the runner, on you. So watch the channel, watch other channels and take in what you can, but read and watch all the other stuff too and form your opinions there. It might be a shoe that's on reviews and they say it's trash. It might work really well for you. I'm really, really pleased that that happens. Don't forget, we're all different. I'm just one man. So that's the top most frequently used excuses that I see all the time from runners to buy new shoes. Bit of fun really guys, you know, there's no point getting really hit up about these things. Life's there to enjoy, to have fun, to wear silly hats. So how do you deal with all these shoe purchases you might be making? If the only significant other that you have in a house is your cat, then your money, like a Kevin Durant three-pointer. I had to stop because Mrs. Edbud was in the next room. Now, you could adopt the honest approach if somebody else is in your house, your home, you have a significant other. Now, you could declare all purchases like some sort of midsole man of war. This could, of course, backfire very badly, so don't do that. Madness. You could get the shoes delivered to a trusted individual, you know, a good friend, perhaps, who's trying to hide shoes as well. That could go wrong for them, though, and obviously their significant other could find even more shoes in their house, and it's a bit of a domino effect there. You could, of course, make sure you're at home when the shoes are set to arrive and sort of trigger off some type of very elaborate diversion. Contact the delivery operative and make sure you can meet them near to the house. So there's somewhere for you to store the shoes. Just keep them away from the front door and any doorbells, that's a sound of terror. Another classic is to store your shoes in a pre-distressed box. So you can keep a box around that's sort of slightly, you know, worn and creased a little bit to make the shoes look like they've been in your home for many years. More expert tips like using pre-sullied laces or a debris and mud dipping tray will be covered in future episodes. Just get those new shoes on foot as fast as you possibly can, people, and then they will start to look like they're part of you. If you've got more tips and excuses, furnish the followers down in the comments. Musical interlude time. Dug back out this fantastic vinyl, Fonzie's favourites. Ah, oh, the Fonz. What a fantastic guy. A real king of style, you know. Not as stylish as me, but very close. Some great ones on here from Chubby Checker, Let's Twist Again. And I love the song Donna by Richie Valens, a fantastic ballad uh, that you can sing if your wife's called Donna. Don't sing it to uh, your wife if she isn't called Donna. There is some great rock and roll on here though, Rip It Up by Little Richard and Rock Around the Clock by Bill Haley and the Comets. Yeah, go out and see if you can find this one guys, um, it's really fantastic. To try and get all of the tracks onto the vinyl, they've cut them really quietly, so you've got to crank your amplifier up quite loud. Fonzie's favourites. Classic stuff. Thanks for tuning in cats and sticking with me to the end of today's video, it's always appreciated. I hope it's been entertaining and informative. Hit the subscribe button and the bell, make sure you give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bird and I'll be seeing you 